Action and welcome everybody. This is BNB Weekly. It is episode 90. We are closing 100 um, and it is 6th of July 2020. Uh, and my name is Vesta Yuvonen. I'm from the OneDrive SharePoint platform team. And in the BNB Weekly, we always cover what has happened within the last week. Uh, and we typically have a visitor. We were going to talk about random topics uh, with the <laughs> related on the visitor who we have. But now, uh, before we go to the visitor of this week, let's actually throw it to the other co host for Waldeck, who are are you? What do you do? And then let's check who is our awesome visitor this week. Hi, everybody. I'm Valdek. I sit on this side of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's um, I am head of product at Rancor, um, ISV v in Munich. And today we have a guest, longtime MVP. You probably know him from his many courses on many different size areas. Probably a lot of stuff done in the Angular space. But since a few days in a new role as a M365 cloud developer advocate, Mr. Dan Walleen. Welcome, Dan. Hey, Welcome. thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited. Fifth day on the job. So, you know, <laughs> I, I know how to spell my name at this point. <laughs> So you know your alias already. That's a great start. You can access Teams and you can send emails and all of that stuff. So, and your in inbox probably haven't exploded yet. Which is great because no, it's going to explode uh, sooner or later. <laughs> I actually, uh, the person I report to, I, I did make a comment about that. I said, I'm loving this zero inbox, and this is how it's going to be, right? <laughs> and it's like, you and, just wait. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> That was the response. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We are obviously we are seeing more and more people actually. Even earlier today, I was sending an email where it went to some marketing people, and they they had an automatic out of office, which was saying, "Sorry, I'm not in email. I'm in Teams," which is interesting. Are we are we going to get there? So, what's your opinion? Just just to, before we actually get on other topics. So, <laughs> I'll have to admit, I had only used Teams up up until joining Microsoft, you know, a week ago. I had used Teams purely for this, for video calls. That like yep. that's it. And of course, that's changed within a week very quickly. <laughs> and I'll have to admit, I am loving it because I can totally see like that out of out of uh, out of office whatever message you mentioned. Yeah. Yep. Like I'm all for yeah. Let's just set up a, a chat on Teams and do it that way because yep. it's so much more productive for me. I mean, I'll give you a quick example. Um, we'll get into it, I'm sure, but I'm I'm going to be with Fluid. And I'm kind of a Microsoft 365 slash Azure bridge type guy because I come with a lot of Azure background. And uh, one of the first things I'm doing is trying to figure out all this stuff and how it relates. And so, you know, I've set up some OneNote uh, documents already, right in Teams. Uh, I haven't used the wiki yet, but we're probably going to use that. So anyway, long story short, it's so nice to go to one place. Yeah. and have it instead of going through email and going, where did I put that, you know, <laughs> that yeah. document. So it, it's been really nice, I'll have to admit. And except, well, obviously, at least personally, but that my only kind of a downside, and then I'm a fin, I'm always thinking about negatives, I can't help it, but, <laughs> but Teams is absolutely brilliant. But then at the same time, after being in the company for quite a few years, you ended up having, like in my case, I'm like in a 250 team, so you have no way for following up on 250 inboxes in the team so that the prioritization and pinning and everything else is then super efficient or important as well but now okay so that's about that so let's actually get back on down to you so but um so can you do a quick intro what you've done in the past and then let's get back to your new role and what does it actually mean in practice because i don't think everybody knows what is a cloud advocate but but what's your kind of a historical background yeah, yeah. So my history is I read a couple books on technology over the weekend, and I think I can do it. No, um, no I uh, kind of an interesting way I came into this role. I did not set out to actually even apply for this role. Um, I've run a consulting and training company for the past 20 years. And uh, during the whole COVID thing, really realized that, you know, it's kind of like everybody's like, I just want to go out. And I'm like, this is nice staying home because I used to travel a lot. Um, you know, sometimes two to three weeks a month I'm gone. And, you know, when you have a family that gets a little tough, done that for many years. And uh, so that was the kind of the first thing. And then in April, I got an email from someone on the dev advocacy team at Microsoft saying, hey, there's this new role. And uh, I saw kind of office there 
and I went because I I come from more of a, I'll, I'll just say open source slash yep. line of business background. Yep. And uh, so at first I'm like, nah, probably not, <laughs> you know, because I just don't. <laughs> I we used to do a lot of SharePoint actually, but I haven't done that in probably 10 yep. years. Yeah, it's, it's got a kind of a different world nowadays. It's got a lot <laughs> so. better, by the way. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, <laughs> the tab, tab files and what were those called? WSPs or something? Yeah, like that's that. correct. Software. There you go. Yeah, it was, it was rough <laughs> back in the day. But anyway, um, so as I learned more about this role they're offering, I said, you know, now might be a good time for a change because I was I was kind of anxious to you know you, I've been doing the same thing and uh, most of what we do we're a small company we work with consultants usually and a lot of companies around the world but you know the whole travel thing and it, it gets a little redundant over time yeah. uh, not like I won't travel with the new job eventually I will but not as much you know yeah so long story short um, I decided to go through what they call the interview loop. Um, which you've been through, Vesa. Yeah. And, uh, basically, for those that don't know what that is, you kind of go through about, mine was about five to six hours of just nonstop interview. In fact, we didn't, really didn't have a break. <laughs> it was kind of like, wow. all right, well, like, I'm going to talk to you for an hour, and then I'm going to get Vesa for an hour, and then I'm going to get whatever for an hour, and just about five or six hours straight. Wow. Great people, though. Um, and... It was a good opportunity to learn more about what's going on with M365, Fluid, yep. uh, this upcoming framework, um, you know, some plans on Azure, things like that. And I went, this actually sounds really fun. So that's that's how I got here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as I've already mentioned, this is now officially my fifth day on the job because with the 4th of July here in the U.S., we were off on Friday. So, yeah, right. um, although I spent the whole weekend putting together a prototype, so I guess it's now my seventh day on the job but <laughs> <laughs> you know you kind of get side excited about it and like i gotta do something yeah um so my role to answer that question is uh really to advocate for uh the fluid framework and then i'll be also kind of integrating a little more with m365 technologies and then also azure technologies so yeah. that's the because cloud advocate part of it. In a way, like we've been talking in the in the BMP Weekly as well. So whenever you are doing extensibility in the Microsoft 365, you always take advantage of Azure. So it's it's yeah. not going to go away. Eventually, it's yeah. It's the yeah. bots or the website with if it's hosted there or a backend web API, which you call in a secure way. So the Azure is definitely there in the in the behind of the scenes, regardless. So I think the M365 is just an abstraction layer on top of Azure. So exactly one way exactly. of thinking that. So. Yep. And then fluid framework, do we want to talk about that one? So <laughs> I, I just, just related on that one for those who are not aware. So the, the, I think the preview of fluid framework actually came out or the, the fluid canvas came out in January, if I remember correctly. Obviously in general, we've been testing around that one quite, quite a few, few times, but really the real time collaboration in the files and documentation and then sharing individual bits and pieces of those documents part of your collaboration platform. And that's actually pretty cool. Or how would you put that one, Dan, to start a career? No, you actually summed it up perfect. Yeah, it's cool. it's cool. literally, it's a real-time collaboration framework. Um, I was excited about it because I got early access. Once I decided to accept the position, I got early access to some of the internal stuff going on. Yep. And uh, they were using all the cool toys, I'll say, that I like to use. Uh, <laughs> web stack development, TypeScript, all of this all stuff, that right? Stuff. Yes. Yeah. Oh, TypeScript. Yeah. You know, there's there's some uh, Kubernetes behind the scenes and Docker containers and all kinds of fun stuff, nice. and I love all that stuff. So, yeah, um, I was pretty excited about that. But yeah, in a nutshell, I, I think I've already had friends reach out and go, "So is it just Google Docs?" You know, <laughs> and it's like. No, it's not Google Docs. Yeah, you could do the same thing as Google Docs if you wanted. In fact, the the preview that you mentioned, you know, already has uh, some demos of that you can yeah. go to. But uh, no, it's it's more about take any application and let's just say right now, uh, Waldeck, we're in a agenda planning, right? Well, we could go in and I'll just call them widgets for lack of a better word for now. Yeah. But we could add in these real-time widgets that would allow us to do everything from to-do lists to just raw text to a whole bunch more stuff that's planned. So all real-time. So it's pretty exciting because 
you could do that on your own technically right i mean you could do web sockets and a lot of low level programming sending things exactly. forwards and backwards trying to make sense out of them absolutely yeah well and, and the more and that was my first thought when i heard about it was like i'll just do web sockets exactly. like i don't need this you know but then you get thinking about it and thinking about syncing like if there's three of us and we're all doing this at the same time how does that sync up in the final doc yeah you know Hit merge and then conflict. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Approve. Nope. Approve. Nope. <laughs> It'd be a mess. So, you know, they do a lot of that low level stuff that they have these uh, DDS, as they call them. And uh, it's basically objects that can exchange data in different ways. And they take care of all that plumbing so that you, with just a really minimal amount of code, can kind of build this into to virtually any app that can run JavaScript at this point. Yeah. yeah. Which is a lot because we have add-ins, we have spas, we have web parts, we have teams tabs, we have, it's everywhere. Everything. Like yeah. if you look at the yeah. Microsoft Cloud and beyond even, like it's everywhere, really. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And the potential is quite huge obviously because then it's not about just about microsoft cloud to be honest as well because there's always the the realities of life that you need to be able to communicate with other people and if it's javascript based implementation hey it's just, just an api idea yeah exactly yeah so that's exactly. pretty cool so as long as you have a one version of truth somewhere basically in this case yes it would be stored in microsoft cloud but hey so um <laughs> Of course, because anyway, so <laughs> I'm just digging a hole and trying to figure out what I'm saying. Anyway, stop, stop <laughs> I do that all the time. Yes. From a family perspective, my wife would say I'm still in the hole and I'm probably never going to get out. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so related on, let's come back on the technology uh, in, a, in, a, in a bit, but just out of curiosity, considering the, let's say, the situation in the world where we cannot travel, everybody's staying home, how's your onboarding uh, situation gone? So uh, have we done a good job and, and any, any tips for anybody who is recruiting now, externally people, not in Microsoft or recruiting to, to another company, yeah. Yeah. new people yeah. and using the remote tooling. So any tips on that? Well, first off, uh, normally, I guess, and Vesa, I'm guessing you probably did this at some point, you know, normally, I guess you kind of fly to the mothership and go through the training, right? Yeah. Um, that's obviously not an option, right, as of today. So, yeah, what they did, they had to, um, the lady that put this on from um, HR, she did a really good job, um, I thought, because you got to imagine, you know, all of a sudden, something that you've had in place for years is now completely uprooted and now nobody can fly there. It's like, what do you do? You know, and, and the simple answer is, oh, well, you know, you just get teams or one of the other options. But, you know, we all know that, especially when you guys sit through, mine was two and a half hours. And when you guys sit through two and a half hours of On this. Teams. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, or whatever it is, with that. right? Yeah. That, that gets a little boring maybe so yeah. um i thought they did a great job they uh first off brought in multiple uh people from other microsoft teams that are not hr related and they shared shared their stories uh they shared you know which i can kind of relate to the challenges initially because you know like nothing as far as the yeah. company goes yeah and the, terminology uh, and all of the the unknown abbreviations, terms, abbreviation, <laughs> which is it's yep. it's not a it's not just a joke. There's a lot of them, and you have no idea because. Well, I, I learned I, about Vesa the uh, you know the AKMS, which a lot of people yeah. outside know about yeah. that. But yeah. um, you can go to the you know our internal kind of HR web thing, and there's a glossary actually yep. because there's so sure. much terminology out there. Sure. You can actually type in these acronyms <laughs> that people say. And I've already been in meetings where I'm like, you know, it's like me going, well, Waldick, since you're separate, right? It's like me going, hey, Waldick, so yeah, we're going to take that CSRV and move that over to the POP. And then we're going to take the ABC with the XYZ. And you're just yeah. like, and like, WTF. <laughs> just like i didn't understand a single part of that sentence right yes yes so it was a little bit of that but what they did um was they brought in some volunteers which i thought was pretty cool because they shared their experiences 
Yeah. Uh, you know, they went through the normal stuff, the benefits packages, which at Microsoft is phenomenal. Um, but what they did to kind of break it up was first off, they had a lot of uh, kind of stop and Q and A in the chat, yeah. where we'd actually respond, and then we did these breakout sessions. Um, and so the volunteers would take a small group, and then we just literally talked for about I don't know thirty minutes, just asking questions. And uh, it was funny in my group. You know, I, I know on camera, I only look about 28, maybe 29 years old. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. We're all good. <laughs> we, we had a lot of uh, new hires yeah. straight out of college. Wow. And, well, they asked, well, what have you learned in your breakout session? And I learned, I'm getting old. That's what I learned. <laughs> I'm tired already, and it's only 30 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, 21, 22, you know, just fresh it's out of all school. energy, so. yeah, exactly, yeah. like all energy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were super excited, obviously. It, it was cool to talk to them. Um, but, yeah, that's what we did. It was all teams. And uh, cool. aside from that, they set up a, a Yammer kind of group for us that we can go in and just chat questions. Um, Yammer? Yammer group, not a Teams team, rather Yammer group. No, Just that one, um, yeah, that one, they didn't use Teams. They used... Uh, that is on purpose. That is on yeah, purpose that's a community to expose platform. you. And, no, no, and expose, expose you. Yeah, that's a good point, technology. actually. Yeah, that's... that's they, actually, they probably did do it. Teams and yeah. Yammer. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's been pretty, uh, I'd say, really smooth, actually, the first week. Yeah, yeah, oh. I can imagine. It, it, it's... A, Definitely a different build. Obviously, when I joined, it was completely different again. But I know that there was like four weeks on site in Seattle. Everybody who's joining Microsoft at some point, that was four Microsoft weeks? University. Yeah. And, wow. and then they got a lot of feedback related on that's not a fun for family. So they needed to shuffle that again. So, <laughs> but it, well, it's one of those things. you bring your family where... with you. That's an option. Of course, it is an option. Or you used to, it, at least. No, yeah. it is not an if option. You can, yeah. Because it's not like everybody's wife can can just take in the middle take, there take, and, can take yeah. four weeks off in the middle of a year yeah. Yeah. so having this remote way of working is obviously much more and, and even training and onboarding is much more let's say family friendly and much more inclusive because it means also that you actually can we as a microsoft or as a let's say an external company who's recruiting people they can reach anybody in the world yeah, so there's right. so many opportunities rather than our talent yeah. able to move, move uh, over so that the talent pool is much bigger. So I totally agree. Yeah, I, I'm in uh, Arizona and I don't have to move because for yeah. me, kind of like you guys, that would have been a deal breaker for me because yeah. we're pretty established here and my family doesn't want to move. Yeah, so uh, it works out really well. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Why would you move to Seattle anyway? No. Um, <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with Seattle. No, <laughs> the weather is slightly different than Arizona, I can imagine. But <laughs> yeah, well, being in Arizona, I, I completely agree with your statement. So, real quick <laughs> side story: my wife grew up in uh, Portland and lived in, lived in Vancouver, Washington. Yeah, which is right across the border. Would be familiar with that, yeah. And true. so she's quite familiar with the rain, and let's just say she hates rain. So, yeah, moving was not so an option. Now, now she's in a bet, better place, right? Yeah. Well, we are, I don't know what it is in Celsius. We're probably 40, what's 42 Celsius? Uh, I'd have to do the calculation. 80, like 80, 80, 80, 80, I think we're going to be 100 and, yeah. 110 100. today, Fahrenheit. Uh, that is a lot. Yeah, that is a yeah. lot. So it's, it's hot, but it's yeah. only for a few months. Yep. And, and obviously your houses and everything else has been built for it. So in, in as yeah. an example, in Finland, yeah. when it hits 85 uh, Fahrenheit pretty recently. That's why I have that aircon thingy and, and it looks ugly <laughs> because I have to have it because it's otherwise it's, it's just no way to do that. And the houses are not built for that hot. That's, uh, yeah, exactly, so. exactly. Anyway, uh, <laughs> should we get back on the- The, the weather for the week is gonna be a little bit <laughs> overcast with the blue skies. Yes, thank you. <laughs> 40, Isn't that a typical Netherlands? Guys, 43 <laughs> Celsius. That's what we're going to be today. That's, yeah, that's going to be more that's rough. rough. That's right. It is rough. You want to stay. You want to stay indoors. I believe. Yeah. Luckily, here a lot of people pools, swimming pools are oh, very. Swimming pool, yeah. So, and air conditioning. So we're yes. we're good. Now, now, if only you had a laptop or a device that 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 you can use while swimming pool without the risk of being electrocuted. <laughs> you know, I should have uh, got a floaty. And done this with my laptop 
floating in oh, the pool. Yeah, that, you're like, that why are you onboarding so weird? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all fluid in here. <laughs> oh, see? Good tie in, Walde. <laughs> now, uh, let's get back on the on the role and uh, and the future. So, um, I, I think they've explained to you what are they expecting you to do um, in your new role as a cloud advocate, and and basically, there's a, there's actually quite a few cloud advocates in the in the Microsoft. Typically, they've been in Azure side of the house, but it yep. actually makes a lot of sense now to start breaching things because for those who do not know, we've been built, Microsoft has been built in this in a weird way where we have Microsoft 365 and then we have Azure and they're basically two completely different organizations. But um, this is already a great start that we start completely mixing things. And to be honest, Dynamics and Power Platform and Power APIs are already across the, the, the boundaries, so to say. Um, but what's, can you explain what, what does the cloud advocate do? What is the expectation? How are you being kind of uh, created? Are you doing a good job or not a good job? Yeah, so the, the role itself really, it's number one is to let the, we'll call it public, uh, know about what's going on and to be able to take that feedback directly to the team. You know, a lot of times you can submit a user voice or you know something like to send an email, but you never know if anyone reads it, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. So, or then, sorry, sorry. Or then, it, then it get the typical response back. We add it in our backlog. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your That's feedback. Great feedback. Great feedback. There you feedback, go. There yes. you go. That's just an auto response. Thank you. For <laughs> <Yeah. your feedback. laughs> anyway, um, so one will be kind of an advocate on both sides of you know once, especially once we get back to conferences that are in person, things like that even in the online conferences, as uh, people have questions, whether it's on the, once it's open sourced, you know, on the project itself, yep. uh, directly in person, um, we're gonna be doing, you know, I'm, I do a lot with video, so I'm sure I'll be doing a ton of video, articles, things like that. Code samples, hopefully with you guys on uh, the, the PNP site, yep. because Perfect, you had yeah. a, lot of great, a lot of great stuff on there. I was impressed, yep. it's a lot of in, in really impressive uh, content on there. Um, so I suspect at some point we'll kind of migrate to that as well. Right now, my role is I've been kind of day one, as soon as I learned how to log in, the first <laughs> thing I did actually before I even started was have some meetings with some of the PMs on the Fluid yeah. team. And so, uh, you know, I've met, uh, Peter and Nick are two of the main yeah. folks that I've met there from Fluid and they have a, a real robust background in M365 concepts and all that. So they're kind of my uh, my go-to guys right now. But getting to know them, uh, like tomorrow I have a meeting with someone on the engineering side that we're just gonna talk about some things. And so it's been good though, because keep in mind, I'm coming from a totally outsider view. Which is and good. a lot of these folks have been at Microsoft for a long time, um, yep. even longer than you, Vesa. Yeah. And- uh, <laughs> That's really made me so, feel old. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what do you mean? They don't are look even good. longer. Yes. <laughs> you don't don't talk about old because I can tell you're way under me. So <laughs> but uh, I'm jealous, that's why I say that. But um it, it's been good that way because uh now we're starting the dialogue on different uh things that you know, right now it's just me, but there'll be another person on board as well that's gonna help with fluid. Yeah. Um, they just today announced uh, one graph person and two teams people yeah. on the the new M365 kind of cloud advocate team. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of the articles I saw you showed Vesa was by one of them, actually. Yes. Correct. Um, so uh, anyway, so part of the role will be interacting with the team directly to first off, I just got to dig in deep, right, to what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, Waldeck, you're going to be like, hey, Dan, how do you do this? And I'm going to be like, uh, well. Let me get back to you on that one. Yeah, let me get back to you. So, uh, yeah, you know, I've, been, I've had access to it for not very long. <laughs> so, um, I did get it running, though. That's good. good start. That's a good everything's start. Private, Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything's private right now, so I did get it running. Um, so I think the other big thing, though, will just be putting together some learning plans for people to, you know, if one of you is interested or a listener is interested, like, how do we get started with this? Well, they're going to have a website for that. 
Yep. But then, you know, once you get past Hello World and some of the basics, like, now what? And so yep. we'll be working on that as well. Yeah, cool. Makes a lot of sense because, first of all, so we, we talked about this one quite a few times in this episode that when you work with, the, for example, in a BMP, we work with a group of MVPs and, and PMs and everything else, you work in your bubble and you don't actually realize that not all of the other people are at the same level as you are on understanding the things, which then... Um, actually messes up the mindset of being, oh, I need to do something super technical mm. and super, super exactly. uh, high end, which is no, 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 that's not what people want. People want to have getting started and then gradually getting more deeper on the on the understanding of things. So, And also, um, and also the thing, and that will probably make me sound really old, but like, you know, in the past, <laughs> is that a we, theme used to today? <laughs> we, we used to learn from books. <laughs> right, Sorry. right. So, so yep. if if you wanted to learn, I don't know, ASP.NET or something, you would buy a book. You would you you would read it begin to end, and you would yep. have a robust way to learn it, and you would know it in and out in a way. Yep. Today there is an, an article about that, blog post about that, video about that, and you kind of learn things. You get it to work, but you don't understand it fully because you only I learn agree. fragmented bits and pieces, right? So I get like having a learning plan kind of replicates that, let, let's say, a structured way to learn like you would have either in a course or in a book. So I think that yeah. that, that is a more solid way to learn as opposed to just read, read an article here, check out sample there, and kind of think like, I'm an expert now. No, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard. I, I remember back. Um, this will really date me, but back in the VB three <laughs> days, not VB six, VB three. Um, this is like I was literally that's right way out of college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, in fact, that's how I first learned about uh, you know VBA back in the day because I yeah. literally used to automate Excel. We literally Access, used to use I, Excel yeah. to yeah. Excel had it still can do it, but you could point it to a web page and it would kind of suck in the web page into the cells yeah. Yeah. and then you'd know which cell to go to. And that's how we used to screen scrape. No joke. We used to <laughs> grab a web page, bring it into Excel. And then we had some code that would grab the cell and then update a database. This was like, in it's, the it's like it seems like everybody uses Excel for everything except the thing that that was intentionally made to do. <laughs> Seriously. Like, you talk to folks like, yeah, so I do this. You do, do, it, do, it, do it where in Excel? What? And then like people do like weird kind of, like scrape sides. Yeah, Excel. That, to be fair, I think Excel is quite quite popular uh, for the purpose. It's being used as it's well, but it's a good point. It's, 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 yes, it's, it it's can do many things. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I now, I'm, use, uh, on that subject real quick, I want to use, they have a new uh, money feature where you can tie it into your bank account I saw. Yeah, yeah, correct. And it looks pretty cool, actually. Like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going. I could, I would love that because then I'll have well, to go through some third-party website, you know. Well, sure. and also now the fact that you can write TypeScript in Excel, so no VBA anymore. You can, you can just program TypeScript again Excel. Like, how cool is that? That's very cool. I love TypeScript, so very cool. Yeah. Cool. But now, to uh, wrap that up, your, our thought on books, Waldeck, I, it made me think of back in the VB3 days, if you didn't know the answer, you went to the you bookshelf. Book. Yes. Yeah. And if it yes. wasn't in one of those books, you yes. just suffered. It didn't exist. It, yeah. didn't, it didn't exist, right? Like the whole yep. truth was in a book. Like, like you would go to the back, index, there, done. Answer, there you go. And yep. nowadays, the, the, the answer is actually in a GitHub issue list, right? So quite often, <laughs> yes. comment in a GitHub issue list, which is, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's how I do that. <laughs> I have been there all day today, guys, with something I'm working on right now. I've lived in GitHub issues today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's the, the most up-to-date version of the truth, because it's you get the early previews on, oh, we didn't have a time to document this yet, but here's how it works. And people document it at some point, but ah, no. Try to get the documentation out, but it's yeah. interesting how the world has changed. Absolutely. Now, from a timing perspective, uh, let's actually jump to the articles and then wrap up the the discussion after that. So, just to run through what has happened within the last week uh, across the M365 side of the house, updating you Dan on on what's happening as well. So. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I think you've anyway gone through all of this stuff. Uh, I'm catching up on, on what's happening. First of all, on the teams, uh, so there was a June update on what's coming in teams. And obviously, the, probably the most weighted one for, within a teams is, is finally getting the seven times seven. So that's 40 
nine, unless I'm completely mistaken. Um, plus one. Plus one, so it's the basically right. 50. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. I haven't seen this in practice. I think I saw 15 or 16 of the PMs in our organization in one call, and then somebody started trying a guitar, and then everybody was humming there, and that was actually pretty cool because you'd see everybody there. <laughs> Yeah, it was a really weird moment, but <laughs> worked out. You, really you well. wouldn't know the show, but in the U.S., Jimmy Kimmel does stuff yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. If you if you watched him at all, maybe you do know. Yeah, um, I know. yeah that I kind know. of reminds yeah. me of that. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for the thousand by a thousand, so that everybody's like the size of a pixel. You know, <laughs> all hands, the all hands <laughs> meeting at Microsoft, like everybody's in. Oh, that everybody. would be interesting. Boom. That would be so interesting. Now, a lot of actually announcement in this one, but we'll obviously link it in the in the blog post. Uh, something just to call out. Good to see that our uh, device manufacturers are getting uh, teams uh, signed off as well. So uh, I don't have I don't have that Bose model, uh, but uh, that seems to be now most up to date. And then on the dev platform, I know that there's some new announcements coming actually pretty soon in here as well. Um, but there's incoming webhooks for the adaptive cards. And there's a lot of, lot of love on this side uh, related on the chats as well. But from a timing perspective, let's actually jump on the next article just to call out introduction on OneDrive features to share and collaboration across work and life. So a lot of, lot of actually new features in OneDrive. Uh, to be honest, I don't know why this is in Microsoft 365 block, but that's in the Microsoft Teams block. But anyway, so it's it's slightly weird how this are always communicating. Um, but there's actually something which is uh, super important for SharePoint people. Um, well, I wouldn't use uh, mandatory metadata for OneDrive files or site files, but there's a lot of customers who do, and now we actually support those sync metadata support uh, for the for the metadata as well, which is actually pretty cool. And a lot of other new uh, improvements here as well. So cool stuff. Now, uh, oh, and a black support because of course you need to have a black support. Dark team. Dark team. Now for devs. For the web. Yeah, for the web. <laughs> Anyway, uh, SharePoint had the June 2020 uh, announcement as well. Kathy Du uh, had a nice uh, discussion related on branding setup. Kathy used to be actually on the on the Dev Platform side of SharePoint, but now on the on the branding side, a lot of lot of announcements here as well related on integrations with Microsoft Teams. Uh, uh, create uh, actually transforming any of the classic sites to be a communication site, which is actually pretty cool as well. So basically moving to this more modern portal experiences, and then you can absolutely surface that portal in the in the teams. So you can actually have a nice combination of collaboration and then portals in teams. A lot of additional announcements as well. Uh, fluid design system is gradually getting in there as well. That's going to be visible in the dev tooling as well. And obviously improvements in lists, which are all available in the Microsoft Teams as well. So there's a lot of, lot of uh, interesting stuff here. Now, moving on to the dev side, lap around Microsoft Craft Toolkit day, day 12. There's a big, big, big uh, season two ongoing. And this is from Baldwin Nug. A success stories with Microsoft Craft enabled apps. So basically partner stories related on the Microsoft Craft usage and how they've been built and calling out uh, the different stories. I think these are super, super interesting always because if you have an API, the number one question is, okay, cool, but what do I do with this? So having the scenario, having the, the understanding on, oh, I can do that, and then you can take that idea and transform that to be something else is, is super valuable. Real, real quick, I think this is one of the most underutilized uh, features of m365 actually like i think more and more people need to know like what you can do with it because it's pretty yeah, amazing absolutely the, and and yeah. especially now that microsoft craft api surface is absolutely brilliant and the craft toolkit makes it so easy to integrate on top of it so absolutely brilliant job and therefore the whole team who have been working on that now vincent Biray had a update here related on duration of change tracking tokens for identity education resources quite a significant actually change uh, reduced to seven days instead of 30 days uh, on the token life cycle um, it's definitely good to be aware and, and hopefully there's nobody who's getting impacted by this change as such uh, vincent by the way also an ex mvp who moved into microsoft so dan you didn't know that so i wanted to <laughs> do the connection there as well nice nice um it's good to see a lot of mvps actually getting also uh, working in microsoft and getting that experience we talked about typescripts in office and and simplified api for office scripts and obviously there's updates for office scripts and office scripts are basically 
the thing. So you can actually build then uh, TypeScripts and, and take advantage of automations in the in the office uh, by using the, the office scripts. So I think this is really, really cool uh, from an automation perspective. Uh, breaking changes Microsoft Teams beta API is calling out for Nick Raymer and could be aware if it's in beta, it's understandable that it might be a breaking change because we don't guarantee if it's not in the 1.0 graph API. So it's super important to be aware of that as well. So basically personal application API surface has been slightly changed. Uh, so if you're building something in here in this area, have a look on the details uh, from Nick on that. And then uh, lap around uh, Microsoft Craft Toolkit day 13, uh, Toolkit with React. Um, so how to actually build uh, that React or single page applications with that setup. So really cool stuff. And, and I don't, this is like two lines of code or well, less than 10 anyway, to build the agenda <laughs> and to-do list and all of that in React. It's, it's actually pretty cool. So cute. And then uh, something slightly more closer to Valdec. Do you want to actually talk about this one? Because you've, you've uh, are responsible at this side of the house. Yes, for our part. So I come at um, together with three other guys, uh, author five five CLI, um, and since a week, we are available in the Azure Cloud Shell as one of the default tools that are there. So if you want you want to use it, like there is no need for you to install anything. Don't care about dependencies. It's just available there. So like this is a really huge milestone and so cool to see something that was built open source, like totally non-Microsoft owned project yeah. developed in the open and now pulled in like being in Azure. Like there, it doesn't awesome. get bigger. It yeah. doesn't get bigger than that. So yeah. it's pretty cool. That's how it should be. And and trust me when I say that when I started in Microsoft in 2006, and if somebody would have said what you just said, what had happened for this, would have been and and Well, so, so first of all, right, like it, it, it runs on Node. So in Microsoft back exactly. then, it was like, what? Yeah. And then it's like open source, open like what? Source. Yeah. And exactly. then you build it on a Mac, like what? Yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah. like just, just three reasons not to do anything with that. And nowadays, there's like the <laughs> total opposite. Yes. Right. So, Absolutely. So it's really cool to see this out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great I'm achievement. Gonna to, I'm going to have to try that now. In I use uh, I, I alternate between Mac and Windows, but when I'm on Windows, I use the new Windows Terminal um, yep, yep. app, which is awesome. I'm going to have to try that because they have the Azure Perfect. Cloud Shell option. And uh, so that's pretty cool. I love Perfect. that. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I, I have to say that this one started as a good example. So this one started as a, I think, Baldek, like you run into the model where we had a PowerShell instructions how to enable Office 365 CDN within your tenant. Correct. And then Correct. it's in PowerShell. Well, PowerShell doesn't work Which, in Mac. How back do we then do that? Only on Windows. Yeah. yeah so exactly. each time I wanted to adjust it, I would need to boot up a VM. It was like, really? No. Like, there's <laughs> got to be a better way, right? So. Yeah. Like three years back, I built this with two commands, and now it's 400-ish commands in. Right? And yep. yeah, wow, still evolving. Good job. Thank you. Excellent job. Now moving on on things related on PowerShell. So this is related on PMP PowerShell, which is going to be PowerShell Core pretty soon. Um, but um, the reason why we call this out is actually the picture of Irving. For those who know Irving. Uh, so um, Irvin had a summer break and he did some weights. Um, no, just <laughs> he's a father of the BMP PowerShell uh, and basically uh, guidance on how to do uh, image uh, transformation and, and uh, encoding properly, and then yeah, basically doing taking advantage of the connectivity on the cloud and making things happen. So really cool stuff as well. So connecting to the item and then transforming that to a base 64. So pretty cool. But I just love how Chris is one of the BMP team guys who actually created, created and edited picture. We've been laughing for that one for a week now. So um, uh, can I cover it publishing page to a modern experience? So this one is really cool from Paul Bollock. Uh, so this is really around the BMP page transformation tooling. Again, open source tooling for transforming from classic SharePoint to modern SharePoint. So you can actually do in-place transformation of things, uh, uses then PMP PowerShell behind of the scenes and really walks through the process of doing that. And if you are in classic SharePoint, please, please modernize yourself, modernize yourself. You want to use modern SharePoint. Uh, I think even Dan was like, look oh, into my eyes, my eyes, yep. three, two, one, you want to go to modern? <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've done lots of classic back in the day and yeah, the, the new way is the way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, uh, beginner's guide on using classic Azure DevOps build process 
process is really around SPFX uh, and then build processes uh, with the node uh, and automation of the deployments uh, with SharePoint framework, which obviously can be targeted for Microsoft Teams as well. So really cool stuff and automation step by step. And this one is from Laura, uh, Wonder Laura. Uh, a lot of people actually know her by that name, but really walking through what is the lookbook Microsoft.com experience for creating example sample content to your tenants. So really cool stuff as well. And what's really cool, and I mentioned this in Twitter earlier today, like a small just message for Laura, and then I got retweet, 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 retweet from people catching that. We will start supporting uh, simple templates. So actually, as an example, all of those are simple templates. They're just branding templates to be provisioned by a non-admin uh, person. So anybody who nice. can go to the service and then connect to the tenant and provision a site collection based on the template, which is really cool. CSM.NET Standard with SharePoint app only principles. So CSM.NET Standard APIs were basically provided a week ago. Uh, again, always use Microsoft Graph when possible, but since there's certain old APIs which are not there yet, then there's CSM.NET Standard version for addressing that gap. Um, and this walks through the app only story on that one for Eleanor. Uh, Microsoft Team Messaging Extension with authentication access to Microsoft Graph. So really nice story from Marcus Muller related on how to get started, a long blog post walking through the steps and, and explaining the story on using the Microsoft Teams Yeoman generator for the solution. And then uh, where's the title? Where's the title? There it is. How to build a simple custom property pane using TypeScript for SPFX. It's pretty well hidden actually. Is it my <laughs> white screen maybe which is causing that? Um, but really walking through the simple custom property pane creation using TypeScript for SharePoint framework. So cool stuff as well from Jenkins. Uh, he's been really active nowadays on, on SharePoint framework side. And then the final was from actually from the new Cloud Advocate, uh, Ica. Um, and she's been writing about Microsoft Graph Toolkit, reusable web components to access Microsoft 365 data. It's kind of an overview article, what it is and why everybody should be aware of that. So really cool stuff. And she announced today that she is part of the team, actually, Dan, your team, right? I just saw that email this morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and there was a few other announcements as well and a few other people. Uh, Bob Chairman, I will explicitly call him out because he's part of the BMP team, has been uh, a long-term MVP and a, and a Microsoft employee in the past as well. Good article, by the way, from Ica on this one. And she's be, she's been scheduled as a visitor, visitor in the upcoming BMP weekly as well. Now, and we're hitting the hour. So do we have a hard stop in a minute or not? Just checking. Do you have a meeting? I'm, I'm good, actually. Okay, so we can chat a few more minutes uh, yep. without this. Um, this always happens. We just can't do this in 45 minutes or 50 minutes. So, and there's so many articles, so many cool stuff. Which is good. Yeah. First thing I got to ask, guys, though, because what do you say you are? Nine, nine hours ahead? Eight hours? Uh, From, so I am be... nine. Vesa is ten. Yes, I'm ten. Yeah. Okay, why is it still light out? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, well, in, in well, Finland it is. In Finland I'm it is. Yeah. So this <laughs> week they have light yes, 24 exactly. hours. The next week is going to be 24 hours dark. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> Indeed. No, I was just yeah. thinking about that. Going, it looks like it's noon where you guys are at, and <laughs> it's like not so much nine or ten o'clock or something like that. Yeah. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the things which you appreciate when it's summer, but you hate living in Finland in when it's winter because it's just dark. dark. So you but mean again. like like 11 months of a year you hated there? <laughs> <laughs> Every location has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. That's so, right. That's so right. It is what it is. <laughs> so, um, but now, uh, Dan, um, Let's let's just sum it up and <laughs> close up the webcast. But but um, any any um, if you think about anybody from the community who's like, okay, so that looks like a really interesting job. I always wanted to be a cloud advocate uh, in Microsoft. Any any kind of a recommendations or hints or uh, or ideas where they should be where they should be spending their time on? Yeah, yeah. I I think you know the the first thing is obviously you need to be um, you can't know everything. Um, and so you got to be willing to admit you don't know everything because it's these days, it's just, you just went through those articles and I'm going, oh my gosh, that's just this week, you know, <laughs> and then, and there's probably a hundred more as well or more yeah. than that. Yeah. Um, so I think having the, uh, uh, ability to admit that you don't know something 
is is actually a good thing in this type of role because it's like you said, Waldeck. I'll I'll get back to you. You know, <laughs> yeah. There's just there's just so much. You know, it used to be back when I got started, you can know one thing, know it really well, and yeah. be good. These days, I mean, it's crazy, right? Um, I think the other thing is just to be really involved with, um, you know, whether it's speaking opportunities, writing, uh, putting out samples for people uh, to, on GitHub, for example, uh, to help people out, which a lot of those folks you mentioned are doing that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you have the PNP stuff. And so I think anything you can do to be involved with whatever community you like working with um, is a good thing. And it kind of means, though, that probably you're going to have to go above and beyond what you do at your maybe daily job. Um, so, you know, if today you're just uh, what we'll call it a enterprise developer, let's say, and you don't get many opportunities to do some of these things, then that means, yeah, on weekends and nights, Evenings, you're probably yeah. going to yeah. step out of your comfort zone and, uh, you know, move into that a little bit more. Because the last thing I'll leave is that um, I, I've had a bunch of shows I did earlier uh, before I took this role about entrepreneurial stuff. Um, the One of them was called being an entrepreneurial coder. And the general idea was, you know, if you want to make money on the side, and I'm not going to go into that for this discussion, but what I would say yeah. is that in that discussion, I, I mentioned that if you're not willing to put yourself out there, Right. And realize that, yeah, there's going to be some people that don't like what you do, and there always will be. Yeah. And you just finally get to the point where you're like, okay, you don't like it. Sorry. I'll work. You know, you learn from it. Um, yeah. And then there's some people you can't learn from, <laughs> and you just ignore <laughs> them. But <laughs> there are some of those people, too. But, yeah, yeah. most people are constructive yeah. um, with their, their feedback. And so I'll, I'll just wrap up by saying be willing to put yourself out there. Not only is it going to increase your career wherever you're at, but if you want to get into like a cloud advocate type role or just DevRel, develop, developer relations, yeah. you kind of have to be willing to put up with some of the the noise. Yeah, and and that's actually really good on putting that as well. So and and also if somebody is providing you negative feedback or gets let's say slightly edgy on what you're doing, it means that you're making a difference because that's the first there sign that somebody is actually taking a really seeing okay so what are they doing and i don't like that and maybe they feel challenged or maybe they feel um jealous about what you're doing and 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 there will be those negative things as well but most of the community and especially in the in the microsoft side is is really inclusive um, and trying to be as inclusive as possible doesn't matter who you are where you're from uh, we want everybody to feel friendly and and well taken and welcome to the community so I that's agree. how that's how it should be. So, any, anything, anything from your side, well, like, sorry, we've been <laughs> not giving you a good. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm here. Silent, I'm, typically. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm learning. No, no, I am not interrupting. I'm listening. I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's exactly as you say. And then the one thing that I could add is that typically the one thing that isn't always obvious to, uh, especially devs, is that many devs have the notion like. I build this tool, put it out there, and people will come. Yeah, and Good. and they don't. Yes, because it's like it's like basically the same thing when you have a job, right? You have a job, so you do your job. But if you run your own company, then right, like there's also a part like the admin part of it, like sales and bills and every everything around that job. And it's the same thing being a dev, right? If you want to build a product in the open, well, then you have to build the code. It has to do its thing, but you also need to advocate for it. Like you have to talk about it, write about it, present, and rinse and repeat and help onboard people, which is none of these things means building the actual code, yeah. right? So it's also, I think, it's also this this another thing, like when you build something, it's, it's just, it is the first step to build something, but then you also have to help everybody to understand, like, why would they care about it? Because it's just one of the exactly. 20 million tools av available, right? Yep. So it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, that's exactly, uh, I mentioned I threw in a one note document into teams and that's exactly yeah. the process i've been going through with fluid yeah. because you know there's going to be an open source but that doesn't mean people are going to go oh i need to use this because yeah, first off exactly. it's a different way of thinking yeah um and second off they may be like oh i don't need that like what are the use cases um yeah, exactly and that means documentation which is not that fun sometimes <laughs> well most of the time but yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, y- yes, yes, and also this um, first time experience, right? So yeah. you want to start, you want to try it. What is your first time experience? You do you pull the code? Sure. Do you have like does it work? Are you stuck anywhere? Do you feel dumb or do you feel empowered? Right? All these things. It's it's small things, and it's and it's as you say, like it's not the very advanced things. But there's always more novices out there than experts in anything. There are new people who start every day. And That's I think right. it's a big, big part of the job to help these folks, like uh, give it a, a try, experience that, and only then say, is this is a thing for me or not? And that's actually that, a good way of actually thing putting. To keep in mind, yeah, absolutely. Is, absolutely. You said this earlier, Vesa. Is uh, the uh, we we kind of get so into our technology, the more experience we get, that we yeah. tend to forget what it's like to start. Yeah. Um. So you have to be able to kind of rewind and walk in those shoes. You know, that's yeah. another challenge. And it's and it's a good 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 way of approaching also on contributing on the community uh, is finding those communities and those projects which are actually supporting that approach and and obviously as an example through the BMP we're providing the the sharing is caring initiative it doesn't matter if you want to contribute on our stuff but there's the sharing is caring which basically is training sessions on starting to use GitHub. So how do I contribute on documents? How do I submit a sample? How do I modify an existing sample? And these are basically scheduled every single week. There's there's a training sessions for people. Um, so if you don't have the experience, please volunteer and go to those sessions and then you learn how to get started. So super valuable as well. Now, uh, watching the time, I think we have a few minutes over the time. So being no, no, which is not a surprise, to be honest, uh, we're always doing this. <laughs> but we're still less than a one hour from overall recording, which is really good. But I think it's time to close up that we would be able to continue this discussion probably for a long, long, long time. So, but thank you, Dan. <laughs> Welcome to Microsoft. Uh, great to have you in the in the company. Um, I'm looking forward on, on all of the contributions on the Fluid Framework side and the guidance side on that as well. So, well, thank you. Really, Thanks really for cool. having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, and we'll be back with the new PMP Weekly within a week. So, <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Bye-bye. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. Bye. <laughs>